Hello everyone, this is Daniel with fitnessblender.com and today we're going to be going through a cardio and upper body uh, specific workout. This is going to be kind of an ABAB pattern in an interval of 45 seconds on and 15 seconds off. But before we can jump into that, we need to get our warm up done, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay everyone, for our warm up we're going to be doing each one of these for about 30 seconds a piece, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, our first one is going to be a side step with an arm cross. Nice and easy, you're just gonna move those arms across in front of your chest while you step left to right, small steps. With our first warm-up exercise, you wanna keep it nice and light. You don't wanna start jumping into anything too crazy. You wanna slowly start flushing that blood around your system, warming up those joints, and starting to get that breathing a little bit deeper. Just keep it going. Try to really push that range of motion across in front of your chest and behind you. But don't do any crazy heavy swings. All right, we're doing toe touch sweeps next. So down across to one foot, sweep across, and then stand up, lean back slightly, back down, sweep across the opposite direction, and slightly bend at the top. Just nice and slow. Try to get a little bit closer to those toes every single time. Again, trying to start out really nice and slow, working into that range of motion, warming up those joints. All right, we're doing a high knee plus a large uh, arm circle, so that knee's gonna come up. You're gonna do a nice big circle. Keep moving forward the whole time. We'll switch about halfway through. So warm up that shoulder joint, try to get as much range of motion as you can, stretching behind you and in front. Let's go ahead and switch that direction. Keep those lungs open, nice big full deep breaths. We're doing a squat push pull. So squat down, push out, stand up, pull back in, tight, tight squeeze the back, and round those shoulders, extend those arms out in the front. Nice, slow, controlled motion. Limit that range of motion, that squat if you need to, if those legs are sore or you just don't have a whole lot of range of motion there. Just kind of slowly work into it more and more as you can. Don't worry about really working hard against yourself through this one. You just wanna focus on that uh, opposite end of that range of motion on each side. All right, we're doing a torso twist with a deadlift, so nice and slow, rotate to the left. Opposite side, start tipping over. You're hinging from that hip joint, not from your lower back, so keep that lower back nice and flat. All the way down. As far as you can go, stretching those hamstrings, and then back up. Doing a, tw a, a leg kick, straight up, back behind you. Same leg over and over again, reaching out towards that toe. Try to use just leg strength to get that leg up there rather than actually swinging it. Same thing on the other side, opposite leg. Nice slow controlled motion. Should feel those muscles starting to warm up on you. Feeling like you have a little bit more range of motion. Might even feel that breathing rate starting to increase. And go to a boxer shuffle just up on those toes. Start warming up those ankles, that arch that foot. Just kind of shuffle back and forth, left to right. Just make sure you're staying really nice and springy. Keep those lungs open. We're moving into a squat circle next. seconds left. Feet about shoulder width apart or slightly wider. Go down to one side, squat through the center, back up to the top, then reverse the direction down off to one side, squat through the center, back up to the top. So try to make that outside leg, whichever one you're leaning toward at the time, uh, take most of the weight. Just nice and slow back and forth. All 
All right, next one is gonna be a lunge with a T. So this is a little bit more advanced. You're gonna step forward, opposite arm from leg goes down, open up into a T, then come right back up. Same thing on the other side, lunge down, opposite arm from leg, open up into a T with those arms and come right back up. Just alternate back and forth, start speeding it up as you can. And let it relax. All right, that's the end of our warm up, which means we're gonna be moving on to our workout next. We'll be right back to get that started. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get started with our uh, main routine. This one's going to be 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. We're doing a strength exercise and then a cardio exercise, back to the strength, back to the cardio, and then next group of two exercises. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first strength exercise is going to be a chest fly. So I'm going to be using 20 pounds for this one. Laying down flat on your back. Whoa. Hands right above those shoulders. Nice and slow. Drop those hands out to the side. Right back over top of that chest again. Try to keep just a very, very slight bend in that elbow. Make sure you keep that lower back flat against that mat or that ground. If you have a bench to use, by all means use that uh, weight bench. Otherwise laying on the ground is just fine. Control that motion, nice slow controlled motion. Make sure you're going the same speed down as you are on the way back up. And let that one relax. We're moving on to the next exercise, back to that cardio. Cardio for the first time, we're going to be doing an alternating curtsy lunge plus arm circles. So, curtsy lunge is going to be stepping back behind you. You're going to be doing arm circles the whole time. It's nice and slow, back and forth. You want to work those legs and those arms. So, you want to try to keep that torso as straight up and down as you can. Nice circle around that arm, around that shoulder joint. Try to keep it even to the front and the back. Try to only do it towards the front, especially if you have tight shoulders, you're not going to want to stretch those arms back. So really try to focus on keeping a nice even circle around that shoulder joint. Just a slight step off back behind you for that curtsy lunge. Just keep them going. And grab those dumbbells again, same thing, we're doing a chest fly. I'm starting directly above that chest. And begin, nice and slow down to the sides. As low to the ground as you can, right back up again. Make sure you're not letting those arms rest down at the bottom. Same thing at the top. Bring them just above that shoulder joint and then right back down again. You don't want to let them rest directly above that shoulder joint for too long. Just a split second before you start going back out again. Make sure you're keeping that core nice and tight even though you don't necessarily have to. You want to always try to keep everything stabilized. Pulling that belly button in towards that spine. And let it relax. Going back to that cardio move of those arm circles and the curtsy lunge. All right, arms open out to the side and start out to the side, back up and out again. Actually, we'll go ahead and switch the direction on that arm circle. So going backwards rather than forwards. Nice, slow, controlled motions. If you want to speed it up to make it a little bit more heavy cardio, by all means do that. If you need to limit that range of motion or let those arms rest in between to make it a little easier, again, by all means do that. Just challenge yourself as much as you can without injury. Just keep them going. All right, and let that relax. We're moving on to a reverse fly next. So I'm going to leave 
that weight right where it is. So nice flat back, your tip over, arms come up and out to the sides. Pull them up and out. Ooh, that's gonna be heavy. Flat back the entire time. Keep those lungs open. Palm that hand facing down towards the ground. Constantly feeling like you're arching that chest up to keep that back flat. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> it's burning. And let it relax. All right. We've got our cardio exercise. There's going to be an alternating side lunge plus an overhead reach. So make sure to keep those feet nice and close at first. Hands tucked in. You're going to step out to the side, lunge, and press straight up as hard as you can. Pull it back down as you come back to the center. Side lunge and press up. Back to the center. Pull back down. Press and pull. Make sure you're working against yourself as hard as you can with those arms. Don't just do the motion. Really, really push and really pull. Constantly working against that opposite muscle. If you want to make it harder, always speed up. Let it relax. I'm going to go back to that reverse fly. I'm going to drop the weight. A little bit here. Make sure I can keep my form nice and clean. Flat back, tip straight over, arms up and out to the side. Nice slow controlled motion. Make sure you're picking a weight that by the time you're hitting those last 10 seconds, you are really, really struggling. Try to pause at the bottom of that range of motion where you rest as little as possible. If you start getting tired and need to feel like you're starting to sling those weights up, make sure you kind of pause at the top, let them drop really nice and slow. All right, let that relax. We're moving back to that cardio move, that alternating side lunge with that overhead push-pull. All right, and out to the side, press up, pull down as you come back to the center. Again, press up, pull down as you come to the center. Really work against yourself. The difference between this being a cardio, difficult cardio exercise, and just kind of a light, medium cardio exercise is how hard you work against yourself, how hard you push yourself. Again, like I said, if you want to make it a little more difficult for cardio, just move a little faster. Those arms relax. All right, we're doing a lateral raise next. This is our last group before we get a little bit of a water break. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the weight right there for now. So standing up nice and straight and tall, arms come up, out to the side, at least shoulder height. If you can't get those arms to shoulder height, you need to use less weight. Try to get as high as you can go without opening that hand up towards the front. You're going to feel this through the top of that outside of that shoulder, through that deltoid, as well as through the top of that trap, through uh, from the tip of your shoulder up through that neck. Try to keep those shoulders relaxed down on your back. Don't shrug. Almost done. <clears throat> And let it relax. 
All right, our next one is going to be a ski squat plus a push pull right into a knee and a pull down. All right, ski squat, those feet really nice and close together. Push out as you squat, pull in as you come back up. Knee comes up, hands come up, pull back down, push, pull, hands come up, Oop, opposite leg, hands come down. Constantly working against yourself with those arms. Alternate that knee every single time. Again, if you want to make it a little more cardio, speed that motion up a little bit more. Otherwise, keep it nice and slow under control. Really work, really making those muscles work against each other. Whew, let it relax. All right, got one more of each of those. So we're going back to that lateral raise. I'm gonna make them hurt here a little bit. I'm gonna use the same amount of weight. This is gonna be a little rough. Deep breath, start them up. Up and out to the side. Keep those core muscles contracted nice and tight. Keep that spine neutral. Don't let your shoulders round or tip back. At least bring those hands to shoulder height. Higher if you can. Keep those shoulders down on your back. Don't shrug up to your ears. Got 10 seconds left. Keep pushing through it. And let it relax. All right. One more of that cardio exercise. Again, the faster you go, the harder more is going to be uh, cardio exercise. The slower you go, the more you want to focus on that form. All right, so ski squat, push pull, knee up, front raise. Ski squat, push pull, opposite knee, front raise. Again, work against yourself, pushing out, pulling back in. Bring those arms up, press them back down. Push pull, arm raise. Keep it going, speed it up if you want to. Keep it going. Really work against yourself. Keep those lungs open. Oh, oh let that relax. All right. If you're really challenging yourself, you should be pretty tired. Go ahead and take a real quick drink of water. We'll be back to finish up that second half here in just a second. All right, let's go and finish up the second half of this routine. Get my timer started here. We're starting off with a bicep curl. So go ahead and pick your weight for that. All right, standing nice and straight and tall. Bring those hands straight up, palms facing back towards that shoulder, slowly back down again, full extension with that arm, right back up. So make sure when you're doing these curls, a lot of people have a tendency to kind of Kick that elbow forward and roll that shoulder. Make sure you keep that elbow straight back. Squeeze as tight as you can without letting that elbow tip forward. Just keep it going. Nice, slow, controlled motion. Full extension. Try not to pause too long at the bottom. Right back up. Tight, tight squeeze at the top. Also, make sure you are keeping a neutral spine. You're not rounding your shoulders forward or tipping back. You want to just stand straight up and down just like you would normally. And let that relax, drop those weights back down. We are doing a sumo squat with a side leg raise for this next one, for this cardio movement. So get those feet really nice and wide. Sumo squat down, kick up to one side, lift that opposite leg, back down into that sumo squat position, squat down, kick up to the other side, lift that leg. Just focus on that range of motion first. 
And once you have that motion down, start speeding it up if you want to. Keep those lungs open. Keep that movement nice and clean, but quick. If you want to, like I said, feel free to slow down, focusing on that range of motion more than overall speed. All right, back to that bicep curl. I'm gonna stick with the same amount of weight. Again, nice neutral spine, palms facing forward. And start it up. Curl that hand straight up to that shoulder. Keep those elbows tucked back. Nice, slow, controlled movement on this one. Don't speed up. Try not to use any momentum. This is all a nice, slow, controlled motion to make that muscle through the entire range have to lift and work the same amount. Make sure you're still keeping that elbow tucked back. Nice neutral spine, don't lean. Keep everything straight up and down. And let it relax. All right, back to that sumo squat again. Feet really nice and wide apart. Again, start slowly if you like. And start it down, up, and out with that leg. Squat off to the other side. Alternate back and forth. Remember, start slow if you need to, to get back in that motion. Speed it up as you can if you want it to be a little bit more of a cardio motion. Just keep it going, keep those lungs open. Trying to focus on getting that leg up and out to the side as high as you can. If you're a little sore today, just do what you can to try to break that soreness up just a little bit. But don't kill yourself. And let it relax. All right, we're moving to a tricep kickback next. I'm gonna drop that weight just a bit. This one is going to be with a nice flat back, similar position to that uh, reverse fly. So nice flat back, hands in front. Tuck those elbows to your sides. Kick those arms straight back behind you. Keep that back flat. Just hold it nice and stationary the whole time. We're only focusing on that tricep. Stop that motion when that hand is directly underneath that elbow. Anything further forward, you're just working a different muscle. So stop at a 90 on that elbow and then kick it straight back. Back nice and flat. Try to keep that upper arm as stationary as you can. And let it relax. All right, moving on to our last cardio exercise. This is going to be a front jack. Hands in front, straight up over top of that head. If this is a little bit too much for you, the motion or the bouncing is too much, feel free to just step left to right as those arms come up. Otherwise, into a full jumping jack. Try to make sure as you're doing that motion, those arms are coming as close to a straight line with your body as possible, keeping that shoulder nice and tight. All right, one more of each of those. Starting back over with that tricep kickback. All right, flat back, bend over, parallel to the ground, elbows up to your sides, kick straight back.
Keep those lungs open. Focus on that back being nice and flat. Upper arm is stationary. The forearm is the only part of that body that's moving. We're gonna let it relax. All right, just one more round of those jumping jacks and we're gonna go into our cool down. All right, back to that front jack. Keep those lungs open. Again, focus. Keep that shoulder nice and tight. Don't just swing those arms. Make sure you're forcefully moving them back and forth and forcefully stopping them. Don't just swing them up and let your muscles and tendons snap them back. You wanna keep it under control by those muscles 100%. Keep it going. Just a few seconds left. All right, let it relax. Grab a drink of water real quick. I'm gonna reset my timer. And we're gonna start right in to that cool down. So we're doing each one of these for 30 seconds. No break. <clears throat> All right, you guys ready? Okay, our first one is gonna be a wall chest stretch. So go find an open piece of wall or a door frame, fingers, pardon me, shoulder height, facing back behind you, and then you're gonna rotate back on that arm to feel it through that chest. If you're feeling it a lot in your bicep, then rotate that arm so your uh, elbow, the inside of your elbow is pointing up. If you want to feel it more in your bicep, rotate that arm so the bicep or the inside of the elbow is facing forward. Just keep those lungs open, try to let it relax. Same thing in the opposite direction. Fingers facing back behind you. Rotate. You should be feeling this a little bit in the palm of your hand as well. If you're not, step back more onto that arm, you should feel it. Especially for those of you who, like me, your job consists of primarily sitting in the computer all day. This is a good one to help stretch out those hands and try to avoid things like carpal tunnel. So just really stretch it. And let it relax. We're gonna do just a regular toe touch. So feet together, straight down. Start with a flat back. Hold it there for just a couple of seconds. You wanna feel just that hamstring, nothing through that lower back. And then nice and slow, around that lower back, stretch it the rest of the way down. Try to keep those legs nice and straight. And let it relax. We're doing an overhead tricep stretch, so hand comes back to that shoulder, grab that elbow, pull across. Should feel it up in that shoulder as well as to the back of that tricep. Just a few more seconds, we're gonna switch sides. Same thing on the opposite side, hand comes up to that shoulder, grab that elbow, pull across. Keep breathing nice and deep. Try to resaturate that blood with oxygen. Try to slow that breathing down. We're gonna do an inside thigh stretch and an arm cross. So hands out nice and wide. Arm comes across. Bend that elbow. Or sorry, bend that knee. Lean back towards that straight leg while you pull that arm across. So you should be feeling it on the inside of that thigh for that uh, thigh stretch as well as up through your shoulder blade and outside of your shoulder for that arm cross stretch. Just keep holding it. We're going to switch sides here in just a second. Same thing on the other side. So switch legs on the other knee. Other leg drops down towards that straight leg. 
Grab that elbow, the opposite arm, pull across. Whew, man, I'm sweating. Get those lungs open again. Nice, big, full, deep breaths. Try to resaturate the blood with oxygen. Let it relax. We're doing an overhead wall stretch next. So again, find that open wall, hands up above your head. Stretch down, press that chest down towards the wall. Just hold it there and switch those legs whenever you want to. Constantly pushing that chest down towards the base of that wall. Really pulling those arms back. And let it relax. All right, we're doing a kneeling hip flexor stretch next. So kneel down, lean forward as much as you can, pulling that leg back behind you, and lean back as far as it's comfortable. If that knee is a little uh, uncomfortable, then just put a towel or a mat underneath it to give it a little extra cushion, or just to pull that kneecap out of the way, just pull that knee up, or pull that foot up, and it should be a lot more comfortable. Same thing on the other side. You pull that leg up or that foot up, you're also going to feel this quite a bit in your quadricep, not just your hip flexor. So just whatever you're shooting for, just make sure that you're really trying to get that hip flexor primarily. Last one, we're going to do a supine torso twist. So laying flat on your back, knee rocks over to the side. Keep those shoulders pinned down against the, the mat as much as you can. Don't let yourself roll over towards that knee. So basically just pulling that knee down to the ground as much as is comfortable while keeping that opposite shoulder down against the mat. And same thing on the other side. Keeping that shoulder down, rocking the shoulders the opposite direction from that knee. All right, and let it relax. All right, guys, if you wanna go through and do a few more stretches on your own, by all means do that. Otherwise, this workout is complete. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.